<laughs> That's so funny. I feel like you guys were talking about my back when I was trying to get this all set up. I feel a little we bit like you guys had a lot of fun while I was, we did. I was toiling with, uh, tussling with the computer there. It's okay. You're right. You know, uh, there, there's a show we wa we're watching where people tussle with computers all the time. In fact, with deadly consequences on both sides. And that is mm -hmm. Westworld. And welcome to Hand Stamped okay. Hosts. Uh, Nerd Encyclopedia's Westworld Review Podcast. We're going to be coming to you every week with our thoughts and the correct opinions on Westworld. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time, you've never seen a Nerd Encyclopedia show before or heard one, welcome. We're glad to have you. Uh, if you've seen our shows before and you're coming back to double down on the damage, uh, we're, we're still sorry for what happened before, and we're trying to make it up to you as hard as we can. Uh, I'm joined today uh, with my colleagues, uh, Sam, my longtime partner in crime with the the podcasting. Sam, how you doing today? What's going on? And of course, Ken. Ken has been joining us lately, bringing some spice to the equation with TV. Ken, how you doing today? I say. <laughs> how you doing, Scott? Sam, nice to see you again. What's going it's on? Looking fly, yo. Ooh. Yeah. But... Ooh, feeling good, looking good. So uh, we're here to talk about Westworld. Before we do, Sam, why don't you tell them where they can find us? Uh, there's, there's nothing specific for this show yet. I guess just give them the regular, <laughs> regular stuff. So basically, make sure that you're going to our website, um, www.nerdcyclopedia.com, where you see all our links. Uh, we are on Facebook at Nerdcyclopedia. We are on um, YouTube, of course, which you're watching, Nerdcyclopedia. Um, make sure you follow us on Twitter and uh, at Nerdcyclopedia and also Instagram at Nerdcyclopedia. And send us some feedback at the end, you know, if you like what you're hearing or like what you're seeing. At nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com. As always, if you don't like what you ha oh, you hear, what you see, keep it to yourself. Um, <laughs> you know how to click stop. Everyone knows how to do that. So uh, we're all real excited for Westworld Season 3. This is the beginning of our coverage of this show. Uh, we were not doing a show for Westworld Season 2 or Season 1. That's on us. Uh, we're sorry. What can we say? Time only moves in one direction. Uh, it's something we say on this show a lot. Um, guys, mm -hmm. as you know, we talk about weird things on this show because I like to talk about weird things. Westworld is a is one of those shows that brings up a lot of questions um, <coughs> philosophically. So it's one of my favorites. Uh, I am a guy who thinks about this stuff too much. It's one of the awful <laughs> things about being me, uh, along with uh, the weight gain. Uh, and you know, for me, I'm interested in this show and what it talks about, what it, what it says is uh, what, what imbues you with the dignity of a human being, right? What, what imbues you with the need for everybody else to respect uh, you and, you know, your unalienable human and political rights? Is it the intellect? Is it the genetics? Is it something else? And I think Westworld is, is interesting because it makes a... Uh, it makes you think about those sorts of things because if it's intellect, then, you know, we find these hosts are certainly intelligent. If it's memory we find these hosts have memory and so what is the cheat that allows you to harm them without it being uh immoral uh that's a question i got how about you guys what what is it that you like about westworld ken why why are you interested in spending so much time talking about it instead of hanging out with your family wow well <laughs> you know i like the idea of ha if you if you have unlimited funds you can basically play out any fantasy that you want and that's that that was the point of westworld like i'm talking about the the one from 70 from the 70s so the idea was these millionaires could basically go into a, a a park an amusement park and do whatever they wanted with whoever they wanted and they felt no remorse so why what like you said scott what what is the difference what makes this what makes that okay and we find where Westworld went is these robots are basically like us. They live out their day. They interact with everything around them just like we do. So why is it okay to rape, murder, destroy, pummel, beat up, torture, whatever you want to do? Why is it okay? Why is it all right to do that to a robot and not a human when the robot pretty much acts like a human? For all intents and purposes. Wild, right? Sam, what about you? What are you into? What what piques your interest about Westworld? Well, to sort of piggyback off what Cam was saying about um the fact that humans and robots on this show are 
you know, interchangeable, you know, um, sometimes indistinguishable, mm -hmm. you know. So um, Dolores made a very um, dark point about, you know, humans repeating the same steps over and over, you know, repeating the same habits, doing things that they they know they shouldn't be doing this yet and still doing them. So their genetic our genetic code as human beings is pretty much not too different from, you know, the programming of a robot. So what makes what is, you know, what is how do you even separate them? You know, and Dolores has come to a point where she feels that her kind is, you know, evolving. So every um, um, cage that she feels that they put her in, she feels that, you know, she has to progress to a point where it's something else out there that doesn't make her a slave, that doesn't make her, you know, something that she's beholden to. And she wants to. Um, well, what I like about, you know, this show is she wants to find out what exactly is reality, what is real. You know, this thing that, you know, human beings feel and experience and everything. She feels that, you know, she should be experiencing, you know, she should be doing the same thing and experiencing the same thing um, for her kind. And it's interesting, you know, th this this all plays into the um, the I this idea, you know, how do we verify that we're not in a simulation? Right. Uh, it's a weird sort of. Uh, uh, it's an old school thought because this is uh, Descartes, which is, uh, I think, therefore I am. And he says, if you were a, a brain in a vat somewhere, you would know that you're real and you exist because you think. And that everything else can be built upon that. So, like you said, what is reality for these for these beings? And I, and I like that Westworld didn't make this an easy answer for us. I like that they gave us multiple choice options. They allowed Akichida to, to escape into, you know, the valley beyond. And yet... We know that there that that's is a contrived reality, and we allow Dolores and Maeve to escape into the real, you know, real reality, our reality. Um, what's interesting is that they simultaneously make the argument that human beings aren't capable of of appreciating whether or not they're in reality or not. It, it's sure. interesting. They say yeah. the more detail they try to put into human beings, the less it works because it only takes ten thousand lines of code. I think they say to write us. And, and that is just such a profound, uh, it basically says these are inferior beings. <laughs> Human beings are inferior to us and we know it, right? And, and if there were going to be an artificial intelligence to be sprung forth from humanity, the industry that I would like for it to come from the least is the rape tourism industry. I don't want that to have anything to do with the overarching artificial intelligence that's going to make the decision on whether or not the bomb should should land. <laughs> so <laughs> any, anything would be better, you know, even like, uh, you know, even a, a toilet AI that came to life would be better than that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like we will, we're going to flush oh. everything. Just everything's getting flushed. That's how it's going to be. Uh, one size yeah. fits all resolution there. Um, Westworld is a very complicated show from a moral perspective, a very complicated show from a technological perspective. It's ambitious as heck, and I'm glad it's back. Uh, HBO's yeah, in yeah, need of a yeah. new water cooler show. Uh, yeah. They decided not yeah. to renew Watchmen, which was a disappointment to me. I hate, I hate that decision. Uh, me, me too. So we're on the precipice of needing something, uh, something new to distract us. Right, that's what we're what we're looking for. Uh, so how did you guys feel about um okay that the um uh, one because I rewatched episode uh, I rewatched the whole last season again you know to get prepared for this season um so they discover um, Dolores discovers a library of you know human um of what Elsie also discovered that they that the 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 Delos and all of them I believe was copying or or reading their um reading the host brains or the guests, I should say, I'm sorry, the guest the brains guess, from yeah. the, um, from the hat, you know, um, copying all their genetic code and everything. What do you guys think about that, that reveal that, um, that sort of puts it to a point where we are, are the, the, the instruments of our own demise in a, in a way, you know, we sort of, we were sort of like giving them the robots, the, the, um, playbook in order to take us down. Right, they're they're getting all the they're getting the background information they need to basically wipe us out. So then it's just going to be them. They're going to be the new superior beings. They're going to run things. That's interesting too. So, so here's a question for you: Is that is that then humanity? 
if we're reconstituted in uh gene- in you know physical bodies again and they've put <laughs> the copies back in in you know the sleeve so to speak to use an alter carbon term which i think works here uh is that humanity and if so then uh, would we be uh created by the artificial intelligence uh, would you would you look at it that way would you say that you know this humanity isn't real it's all it's this is another version of the uh star trek teleporter question which is another philosophical experiment that i'll explain real quick so basically <laughs> yeah i'm sorry i can't have i'm just trampling all over you <laughs> just go ahead <laughs> it's okay. You just sound like you struck a thought in Ken. Go well, ahead. Yeah, yeah. Because okay, so is this evo- oh, is this evolution? Mm-hmm. So Darwin said a species will continue to evolve, and if something happens to it, its intelligence is shown by its ability to adapt and change. So maybe this is just our evolution, our next for the next two hundred fifty thousand years this is what we're going to be so like that, that's mm. the answer to the question for you right that's that that is humanity so yes if it's if it comes yeah. from earth and it's, yeah. it comes from you know sentience and it's, it's still an extension of humanity and I, and I like to think about what you're saying here is you know technology <laughs> sort of uh overtaking biology and it's interesting because what makes humanity different than all the other animals that exist is that we are able to use technology to bypass the evolutionary process when you think about it if we need a longer arm we get a stick right if that takes one mm-hmm. second stick boom done if a, if a giraffe needs a longer neck it's got to wait millions and millions and millions and millions of years right so it gives us this enormous advantage over our, our uh over the competitors in nature what's interesting mm-hmm. is that that same advantage is going to be applicable to the machine intelligences because they are not bound by death and time and right. uh they are not bound by the limits of biology i mean if i wanted to remake myself down to the molecular level right now i'd be turned into goop <laughs> i'd just be goop that'd be it right i'd just be a, a puddle of sludge that my wife would be very angry that she had to clean up <laughs> how, did, how did you turn into hey, a scott sludge? did you clean that up how am i gonna clean this up it's ruining my carpet i told you not to turn into a puddle of sludge scott no she doesn't sound anything like that it's Scott, uh, carpet. <laughs> Scott, get in get the here! Shop pack again, Earl. Scott turned into a puddle of sludge. <laughs> so, yeah, you, know. you you bringing up some like some some really crazy, you know, philosophical stuff, and I mean, it could get you know scary if you really, really want to, you know, dig deep into it. But that's the type of questions that you know that this show asks. Um, you know, just to get into like you know some nuance or you know some some. Act, active stuff. So, I mean, the show is, is is filled with a lot of action. So, I, what I liked about like the second season was the fact that we actually were able to go to different worlds. You know, um, off mic, we were talking about. Um, well, I was talking about. I should say, um, I wanted more a Shogun world. You know, when they revealed that in the very last episode of the first season, you know, that sort of just like blew my mind. That okay, wow, they don't have just West World; they have different worlds they could go to. Yeah. You know, I cannot wait to see, you know, how that that goes. And just a call back to that um, that particular episode. I love the way that they um, they <laughs> they had. Um, what, what is my man's name that wrote the script to the whole, you know, to the whole Westworld thing? Clay? He wrote the exact. Yeah. Yeah. That he wrote the name? exact. Did I just pull that because I haven't rewatched this in a while. <laughs> I, I think so. Yes. But he, he wrote. He wrote the exact same um, script Ken, for. You gotta catch me up on that, Ken. <laughs> yeah, he wrote the exact same script that he wrote for um, the West World for Shogun World, uh-huh. and <laughs> it was just funny how you know the um, you know the robots sort of looked around when they were trapped, and they, you know they they were seeing everything play all over again, but just in the Shogun World, you know, as their characters and stuff. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it, I, I'm just, you know, citing certain things from, like, the season two that I, uh, I really it's like. It's right? So, mm-hmm. why, why bother recreating, why bother reinventing the wheel, right? I mean, people remake stuff all the time. We're going to see a, a version of Hamlet, a version of Romeo and Juliet everywhere you are. These literary classics are going to play, and there's a reason for that. It's because tropes are real. The character's name is Lee, by the way, is the writer's name. 
Not not oh, Clay. I'm, I'm an idiot. <laughs> well, you, yeah, I was very wrong. Yeah, Lee, Lee Sizemore. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the idea he sacrificed himself and, for uh, for the um for the robots. That was interesting. And what's crazy about the this idea of um of uh, reproduction, right? So mm -hmm. in postmodern in postmodernism, and, and I'm sure I'll get this wrong, and people can just bombard us with emails. But there's this idea. There's this idea of a simulacrum. And a simulacrum is a copy of a copy of a copy, right? So Westworld is a copy of the Old West, okay? It's, so it's a simulacrum of the Old West. It's a simulation of the Old West. The people are simulacrums of human people, right? So they are con constructs designed to be like people, but they're not like people. They're very, very different than people, very, uh, very differently abled, so to speak. So the idea that that, fa that is set up and then facsimiled and pastiche together in every other different zone of the park, whether there's more than Shogun world or there's a Westworld, a Rome world, you know, a medieval land world, you know, an adventure mm -hmm. land, uh, Space Mountain, probably. Uh, all that sort of stuff is just, just sort of crazy to think about, right? It's, and so Indian world. It's a yeah. copy, so <laughs> this is a reproduction of the story originally told in Sweetwater that is a reproduction of people who are acting like, uh, like characters from the Old West in the United States, and none of that is real. It is all it is all a fake, 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 fake. And remember, the old West was also just a copy of everything they found out east. So, so this idea of reproduction is is intrinsic to the plot of Westworld, and is a huge theme here. And to get back to the main point uh, that we were talking about, what are they going to do with the copies of the people? They can do anything they want. They own you. Uh, I wonder the, if the reason that they can duplicate us with 10,000 lines of code is basically their way of interpreting free will. Mm -hmm. Because, like, if you figure, if you direct, if, if there's a billion copies of this instance of us talking on this podcast, right, and they all happen one second after uh, each other, you'd never tell the difference, right? You'd never be able to tell the difference. It's crazy stuff. But we can make small changes. We can make small changes. We can, things, we can make small changes, and that's where the things start to break down, is that even that, um, I think the first character that that happened to was the sheriff. Wasn't wasn't he the... There was a different he, sheriff all of a sudden. Like, right, yeah. and he did something different, and it blew up. Like, it literally blew up the, the script, the storyline. They call them storylines. Yeah. Blew up the storyline. They had to bring that one in, and uh, they tried to... Bernard came in with his... With his iPad, and he tried to <laughs> get the get the get it back online, but it didn't right. work because it was starting now to have that decision making. That's a glitch, right? I think that I think they were finding these glitches. So it's like it, it's like obviously if, and what's crazy is, so at that point, so there's somewhere on this in this in this uh, spectrum of. A tin can, a robot made out of tin cans that has is held together by string, right? If I knock that down, if I push that down the stairs, no one's gonna come to my house and be like, "You terrible human being," right? You add a little bit more sophistication, <clears throat> probably the same thing. You do that a couple billion times, right? Mm -hmm. And then the line starts getting blurred. Is this a is this an object, uh, or is it a being that ha that has an innate dignity? Because that's mm -hmm. the difference between a living creature and an unliving creature. A living a living creature has dignity. You 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 have to respect it. Even a fly, right? It's something that's alive. Uh, right. But a rock. I mean, we'll just blow a rock up, right? Who cares about a rock? But I mean, you smack a fly, it gives you pause, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Westworld Westworld is a vexing show for a lot of reasons, right? There's a lot of really mm. uh, weirdo and nifty things uh, to think about with Westworld, and uh, it's so it's so controversial. My wife can't watch this show. Uh, you know, she, really? she can't watch it. She won't watch it. Uh, you know, we, we, she's given us feedback before Watchmen style, uh, for the show. Uh, she gave us feedback. I know for Mandalorian, she's a huge baby Yoda fan. And that's why I'm wearing this shirt here. Today. All right. She got me it. Uh, but she won't watch this. She watched, we watched the first, the first scene of the first episode <laughs> where, uh, Ed Harris, you know, assaults Dolores and she was like yeah. out. And I've not yes. been able to convince her to come back, like at all. 
Yeah, when you start out shows in a certain way um, that's that's sort of off putting, then I mean I can see that. But you know, it, it is you, when you tell a story. Sometimes you got to raise stakes, and sometimes stakes are there. I mean, it's not going to be for everyone, you know. But stakes are there for a reason, and sometimes you got to let things play out in order to see the full, you know, context of where they're coming from, you know, instead of just playing it for, you know, that, you know. Um, it's, it, you know, it, it is what it is as far as that. Um, what question I want to ask? Um, what do you guys think about their, their, this term they keep bringing up, fidelity? You know, with um, the thing that they're trying to they were trying to achieve with um, James Dalos. And now um, we see at the end of the the season finale of season two, you know, they're trying to achieve that with William. Hmm. How far in the future do you think, we, you know, that 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 particular scene takes place? <laughs> hundred years. It could be in fact, it could be a thousand uh, years, it could be a million years. You know, there's no way to know, because for these <clears throat> for these hosts these copies death has no there's no consequence to death there's no consequence to right. uh to anything there's, there's no such thing as time time for us is important because we have a limited amount of it we have a limited amount of days you know our bodies change uh you know it, the age of someone is is an important context for us right um 75 years mm -hmm. old versus 25 years old right it makes a big difference for not for these guys mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter and and the the limitation of the human lifespan is one of the last things that we're we're sort of running into right from a standpoint of what we're able to do and it's preventing us from solving multi-generational problems like uh climate change and um what to do with the economy and how to handle poverty right these are things that are going to take two or three hundred years to finally iron out but we don't have the wherewithal to conceive of that amount of time um, right Right. We only live in a moment for for the most part, you know, and the more technology that, that comes, the more in the moment that we live. It used to be where, you know, before technology, especially in the last hundred years, started taking an effect. It used to be where, you know, generation or the previous generation would automatically think about the next generation um, and set everything up for that. Mm -hmm. Now, well, at least the way I'm, I'm looking at it is that, you know, we just think about everything in the now. We're not even really thinking about, you know, 100 years in the future. You know, um, if you want to talk about climate change, are we really, you know, thinking about that, you know, for future generations? You know, we're just thinking about, you know, um, you know, whatever achievements we have going on now and to maintain it as long as possible, as long as we're living, you know. But um, but yeah, I, I went I went to this definition of fidelity. um. It is the quality of being faithful or loyal. You know, dogs are famous for their fidelity. Fidelity comes from the Latin roots, fives, which means faith. So fidelity is the state of being faithful. Yeah. How do you guys think that applies to our situation with the, the hosts yeah, or, and, and the order guests? Yeah, I don't know if, uh, if the hosts could necessarily be, have fidelity. I mean, I mean, fidelity also means something that's, that's pure. Uh, it's a quality, right? Right. <clears throat> to, so, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to uh, sort of work that in and make that make that a thing. I think the the guests need to have that quality in order for this whole thing to work. Also, well, maybe may, maybe another thing too. Maybe the host need to uh, want to achieve that pureness that they see that's not there for the guests, the the, the humans that. Um, they they just see the flaws in them and they're trying to achieve that pureness right there. So they're the, maybe the hosts are seeing that flaw mm -hmm. clearly. So the next step in evolution would be a host that's fidel has fidelity is mm -hmm. is that piece. And I was thinking when you were talking about you and Scott were talking about um, the biggest you know us now thinking about future generations and what what's what's something that we have that other things don't have like i think people have regret i think regret is something that can't be coded you can't code it right yeah okay. right right yeah i'm i maybe i'm not i don't know i just had this thought that that's 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 their flaw because they can't really regret something hmm. murder i mean they Ooh. don't know what that is they can't regret murdering even if they would murder a guest well, regret regret requires the ability to be reflective, and mm -hmm. it requires you to 
understand that there are rules that you have to live by because other beings have dignity. And that, that's the ultimate end. That's why we have laws and, and it's not okay to yeah, yeah, over yeah, the head yeah, and take yeah. them back to your cave. It's not, it's frowned yeah, upon. It makes the whole society function and everything. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. right. In order to live in a sane society, you have to have rule. Well, you have to have some sort of rules which breeds that regret if you don't follow a certain, you know, consequences. Um, quans- right, consequence. Yeah. We're about to get real, real far out there. All right. Real far out there. <laughs> okay. So how do you know right from wrong? The, the, then this is not a question I, I would chide you for not knowing the answer to. This is like a big capital P philosophical question. Uh, there are different camps. People say you learn right and wrong a lot. But there's a lot of people that say that morality is written on you because you can infer what's right and wrong based on how you would want other people to treat you. So the golden rule, right? So you can infer fairness. So you can understand that through reason. So if that's the case... It would mean that there's something about humanity that writes that writes what's right and wrong on humanity, right? Puts that on you. Right. Uh, religious people would say, "God, other people wouldn't." Um, does a robot have that? Does does a host have that? Can you build that into the host? And if that's possible, can you delete it? Mm, can you can you backspace? Can you backspace that out. <laughs> uh, so 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 what if you yeah. could, right? So then you do, you build that code into the host and how the host has regret and remorse and knows the difference between right and wrong. Now you've ruined Westworld. Well, right. <laughs> because that's why people go to Westworld. So you can go and do things to things that has yeah. no consequences. Yeah. But now the host, so they're just people. Exactly. They're just people. They're just people. So, so just we, people. we, just so like, we come to what is sentience, right? Like, uh, it's not, it's not, exclu- if it's not exclusive to humanity, is it that what you're saying, Ken, is it that understanding of morality and the understanding of right and wrong? And if that's the case, then if the robots don't understand right and wrong, that they're not really alive. They're not really human. They're not sentient. They're just tools. They're just ciphers. They're just objects. Mm-hmm. So as soon as they learn right and wrong, that's it. When they understand that they've been wronged, right? When Maeve starts being resentful for the way she's being treated by, yeah, right, by, right. The, everybody, by everybody, right. when Dolores understands how William is treating right. her, how Logan's treating her, right. how the man in black right. is acting, they understand yeah. that these things are wrong. And that mm-hmm. is what imbues them with sentience. And that's what imbues them with dignity because they can understand this is not how I should be treated and this is not how I should treat other people. Right, right. That's why she's so obsessed of going to a world that they've been trying to hide from them for so long. Mm-hmm. Well, not even really trying to hide, but she knows it's there, but you know, that they haven't even tried to introduce her to because they've treated her like a uh, uh, um, servant slave, you know, thing that she could be controlled. You know, and now she's, she wants to take that next step. Uh, she wants their world. She wants to fill that reality. You know, so she, she takes her um you know, devises a plan to to go into um the um what the heck is her name? Um where she switches the body. <laughs> oh yeah, Charlotte. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, Charlotte. she she takes over Charlotte, you know, and devises her plan to go into like the you know the real world. So so the, the, this is what's so interesting about Westworld, right? And then at the end, they say humans humans can't conceive of morality because they're, they're not capable of doing it. They always do the same things when they respond to the same stimuli. And it's because, you know, and, and that's the that's another question, right? So you know you exist, right? Like we, like we talked about cogito ergo sum, which is I think, therefore I am by Descartes. So you know that there's a man driving you. Does that make sense? If you think about it, like the man in black little guy up here, mm. like you know that you can experience and you can evaluate Right, you know that. Uh, how would anybody else be able to tell nobody's here if the fidelity of your copy was good enough? Mm. So, when when James Delos is obsessed with extending his life, he's obsessed with cheating death. But it seems to me, and this is what I think William is getting at, is all he's managed to do is create. Uh, is create a shell and there's nobody sitting up here. 
Yeah. So all they yeah. can do is fool everybody else, which makes the entire Forge thing a huge con game. Because it's not really... There's nobody driving the car. If there's nobody to experience the, the stimulus, there's not really any sentience there. And so they're an object. So he's still a tool. He's still a tool. So these, oh, so man. the humans are capable of creating sentient life for Dolores and Maeve and for the other, uh, the other hosts, but not for themselves. They can't create our, our official sentience that they can inhabit. Uh, mm. So, the, so now it's like, you know, and and we can sort of, you can sort of consider these questions by just short cutting out the host end. Just think of them as people, right? So think about transhumanists, right? People that are going to be putting computers in their brains and all of a sudden their minds are expanded a billion fold, right? Like how are they going to look at, at chemical chemical brain people like us? You know what I mean? We run at way way higher efficiency but a way lower rate. Uh, <laughs> it's, gonna be be? So, it's gonna be some major discrimination going on, you know. <laughs> if they're full of history tells teaches us anything, Sam. Is that there oh, will definitely be discrimination. Boy. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. That's that's Man. what we do as humans. We we definitely it it's like our default program yeah. is to discriminate somehow, some way, and, you know. And uh, having, you know, and you can almost conceive of the host as like a separate, a separate species that grew up at the same time as us, almost like Neanderthals, right? Because because yeah. the world has not always been ours alone when it comes to sentience, and it may not be. I mean, people say whales are whales can experience, you know, um, thought. Well, any every, anything that's alive is pretty much you know sentient and everything, you know. Um, it's just that we, we, we as humans, we're we're like the most intelligent, you know. Um, but it's funny how you know it's been creatures that have been living here on this this planet Earth thousands of years have been surviving, <laughs> but um, we've only, you know. And you know the other another question that's interesting here is as as we see what what the hosts are going to do. You know, I don't know if I've talked with you guys about this. Do you, have I ever mentioned the great filter on this podcast before? Have mm -hmm. I ever said that those words here? Okay. So it's like the idea of why aren't there thousands and thousands of alien civilizations we can detect, right? It's We know that life exists, and we know that, that intelligent life exists because we know that there's at least one. So like you can't put zero in on any of the probabilities because we exist. Yeah. So where are all the other aliens? Well, it's posited that there's something about developing into interstellar societies that's almost impossible to do, right? And it's something between the star forming and being an interstellar society. And it can be anywhere in between there, right? So what if one of the things is when you get smart enough, you create an artificial intelligence that by, you know, pure Darwinian competition always destroys the biological intelligence every single time. Mm. Like the Sith. Like the Sith, yes. Yes. Like There's a master and then an apprentice, and eventually the apprentice overtakes the master, exactly. destroys it, and then brings up another one, and it just and the cycle, the yeah. cycle, the cycle keeps can, keeps going on and everything. Think about if the um, only advantage you had over everybody else was that you didn't <coughs> die. That was it. It wasn't like you weren't you weren't faster or stronger or smarter or anything else. You just would never die, right? You wouldn't well, think about how easy it would be to accumulate wealth. You wouldn't have to do anything. You just put five bucks in a checking account, and eventually it'd be <laughs> rich. I mean, that's eventually that's the type of point. like yeah. mindset difference that's going to exist. That, that, that was that's Ken's type of thinking. Ken, Ken loves that. <laughs> oh yeah, Unpound unlimited funds. Unlimited <laughs> funds. You know, just 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 keep it. So so, what do we think about season three? So you were you guys shocked as I was when they premiered that um that trailer uh, a while back and all of a sudden at the end we found out it was Westworld season three, <laughs> you know, where we see Aaron Paul uh, breaking bad fame, mm -hmm. you know, being depressed as he usually is, was on breaking bad and, you know, going through this future show that we have no idea what's going on. Then find out at the end, we see Dolores and then it's Westworld three, you know, what, what, what do we think about what's about to happen in season three? You want to go first? Sure. Uh, hopefully, hopefully they they tie up some things because I think that I mean there's a lot of loose ends. There's a lot like we've just talked about for the past 
30 minutes or so, there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of different ideas and there's different ways they could go. So I hope it, I hope they get it. I hope they get it, get it pretty quick. I mean, I want to know, I want to know like where they're going to go, where their, where their head is at. Well, it seems like we're not going to be experiencing a lot of West world. No, you know, the, the actual, you know, park. <laughs> we're going to see real world, you know, a whole lot in this future. You know, that they seem like they spent some really good money on, you know, it, it almost seems like it's a movie. But I'm I'm, I'm I, I was I was little I was telling um, Ken Scott um, off mic about how the second season um, was a little off for me, you know, right after those Shogun, you know, <laughs> episodes. Um, and they started it seemed like they started spinning their wheels. We watched it. It was a better for me. Um, but. I didn't see myself really coming back for a third season until I saw that trailer. I'm like, wow, this is what I really want to see. What the hell is happening, you know, in, in, in the future, you know, that's outside of this place, you know, and, you know, is, is, is Dolores, is she about to, she, her mission is to take over and destroy, you know, um, humankind to, 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 to uproot her people, you know, so, so they can be liberated, I guess. Revenge. You know, revenge. Revenge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. It's it's going to be real interesting to see how how the whole look of like you know this this future you know mm -hmm. that's that's being that's being posited on on us. It's you know if you told me when uh when season two ended that when season three started I wouldn't give two shits about Shogun World or seeing it or anything that could happen there I'd be I'd have been stumped I wouldn't have believed it. But it's, it's what's happened, and it's very simple to understand why. You know, let's say I gave you a portal 50 years into the future, right? And you could see anything you wanted 50 years in the future. <clears throat> would It would be a waste to use that on, like, Disneyland, because Disneyland <laughs> already looks crazy and futuristic, and you can't tell what's real and fake, right? <clears throat> uh, the real world is always intrinsically more interesting than the controlled yeah. environment of Westworld. Uh, and we reach the point. end of the story you can tell at Westworld right. because the Great park point. is absolutely destroyed, and you know you can't turn the host back on because they'll reach sentience and murder everybody. Uh, imagine if, imagine if tomorrow news dropped that every single person in the Magic Kingdom got eighty six by a rogue Minnie Mouse, right? <laughs> Like, that would be the end of Disney. Like, it would be over. Like, if you want to go back, like, you never go back. And Disney would never be able to, you know, reform itself as a company. Not so, at all. So that's Not essentially rock. what happened here, right? I mean, this mm -hmm. is like an, an amusement park, and the thrills are bigger because the people are more uh, jaded, right? They're like, you know, if you look at some of the speculative timelines, they're what, our grandkids? <laughs> you know what I mean? They're the people that... Are two generations more jaded than us? <laughs> We're very jaded. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's like you said. Once they find out in Westworld, you can actually get killed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's a done deal. I'm not going back to that place. But think about you it know? like this. Like this is the super premium vacation where all the rich oligarchs go. The one percent mm -hmm. of the one percent of the one percent. We've not really met a poor person yet. Even the people that work at Dallas probably have like masters and PhDs and in computer science yeah. and programming and biology and all this stuff, and, and they're obviously very smart. We've not seen what the working class is like. We don't know what the what the the situation is like, and it makes you think if you know if we're on the verge of creating an immortality, you know, like we said, what more advantage do you need over everybody else? The the team that gets immortality first is going to win, because again, mm -hmm. all you have to do is sit. And as we know, because we are all students of uh, economic philosophy, uh, capital has a tendency to accrete. So if I have a billion dollars. That's like going to have a gravity of itself. It's going to pull other money to it, right? So the richer I am, the older I am, the longer I have to accumulate that passive wealth, the greater that disparity is going to be. And we have people who already have it so good over everybody else that they literally can only commit murder to feel a thrill. Mm -hmm. What is that world going to look like? And and what is the, you know, what is New the York. glut? What is the glut of cheap artificial labor going to do to humanity if these hosts, you know what I mean, are just going to show up and all of a sudden they don't need to eat, they don't need to drink, yeah. they don't need to go wow, to the bathroom. Man. You can't yeah. tell the difference between me and you on, between me and a host on a phone. You never be able to tell the difference. <laughs> Think about the cost and really now we're just back to where we were exploitative, capitalistic slavery 
Except the people are kidnapped from computers instead of from ah. the environs of Africa or you know China or wherever. It, wherever you it, it'll be it'll be really interesting if they get that deep in season three. You know that sounds like a couple seasons that need to be. Listen, <laughs> you know if they're going to explore that that um that deep. But yeah, I got, I see where you're going. Don't forget, Sam. These people are much smarter than me. So they'll be able to figure it out. That's what you got to remember. That's the thing that uh, don't trip you up. I, I just, I just want to see more of Maeve being a badass and um, Dolores being badasses. You know, I, I, I love them too. You know, Maeve is she, she's one of my favorite characters on the show because her enlightenment, you know, throughout and when she figured out that she could control, you know, um, host with her mind and everything, it was just like wow, she's just like progressing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she, she, she's a wonder to see. It's super snarky. If anyone uh, is hearing my Dalmatian, they'll be, they'll be glad to know nobody's getting in the front door tonight at my house. Uh, All right. So that is, that's what I have to say about this season so far. Uh, I know it's a lot and it's super boring because thinking about, uh, you know, um, thinking about metaphysics is something I do. <laughs> it's something I... It's, 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 a, it's a lot of stuff that can be gleaned and hopefully, you know, they give us that, you know, during this, this season here. Um, I'm, I'm loving it, um, that I'm going to be doing it with you guys, you know, that we're going to be doing it together so and, sweet. you know, uh, giving, our, wait, giving our takes. We're going to do, we're going to have a podcast <laughs> together. That's, that's the end of the relationship, uh, on my side. Uh, and we're, and we're also looking forward to seeing you guys comment, you yeah. know, on our comments, you know, so. Let's definitely hear from appreciate y'all for a change. Yeah, 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 you're being along for the ride there. All right, everybody. So that is the preview. We're, we're going to title this episode Zero uh, underneath the uh, the feeds. Uh, I know you'll be able to get this on the Nerd Cyclopedia YouTube page because I'm putting it there. Uh, Sam, I guess you're going to probably throw this through the Nerd Cyclopedia flagship podcast. podcast, and then we'll work on getting a feed up for this in the future. Yep. Right? So that's where to subscribe. That's where to find us. Uh, if you got specific questions for us or listen, if you want to – just uh, share your cocaine fueled fever dreams about Westworld. Feel free to drop us a line. Uh, nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com works. So does dropping a comment on the YouTube video. There so we go. We love, we love the comments on the YouTube video. And, and are we saying that we're going to be going live after each episode or, you know, or do we have, do we have concrete plans? We have not ironed out the time, <laughs> but I know I'm interested in doing the lives like we did for Watchmen. We had a really great response to the Watchmen live podcast, and I think Westworld is the type of show where people are going to want something explained to them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the right, right, right after the episode, yeah. you know, for a good 15, 20 minutes and everything, yeah. you know, um, I, I would love doing that again. We'll spend I like that out. last time we watched. Yeah, as long as as long as my wife doesn't get too mad about uh, <laughs> uh, the fact that it's Westworld, she ain't gonna watch it. You know, it's a drain down the time. But we'll see you after the shows. Ken, any you got any final thoughts for the good, fair listeners of the old Nerd Cyclopedia? I, I think we should go live after the show. Let's just make a decision. Let's, let's make do a, it. A yeah, we'll be here. Let's do it. We'll be, we'll be here, here live o'clock. after episode. Yeah. Ken made it. Ken said we're just gonna do it. Executive decision. This is why we brought Ken on because me and Sam were tying too many times. <laughs> We need a tiebreaker. We only give Ken 2% of the total vote, but it's an important 2%. It, it's the 2% uh, that rocks the vote. Yeah. It's the 2% that counts, you know? So, yeah. Sometimes yeah. the turnout's real bad, you know. Uh, you know, you only get 48% turnout. Um, so that's our show. Hand stamp toast. Oh, to explain what the hell that means. So they're out of the park, right? So stamp your hands. Let's get re-entered back into Westworld. Uh, we'll see you guys on Sunday night around 10.05. All right. Peace out, guys. See it. Word. Yeah, so there's no way to tell the difference between a robot and a person. So everybody's either a person or everybody is a robot and isn't that terrifying. Mine's so blown. strong. They're so strong. That's the problem. These robots are so strong. <laughs> we need to get some of those weak robots. I, I know. I, I don't want any of those bent girder bending robots. I want a robot where you need like 30 of them to pick up something, you know? I want to be able to clobber it. <laughs> yeah, we need to turn down their, um, you know, yeah, like right. doing... you yeah, their strength. Your bird, right, <laughs> yeah, he's oh, got, yeah, right. Excuse me a second. <laughs> right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it look like <laughs> oh, man, that was funny. All right, good podcast, guys. This podcast is a production of Nerd Cyclopedia Podcast. Nerd Cyclopedia.